Good. We are now going to hand you back over to Maddie, who will be introducing Robbie, and his speech is all about growth and development. Maddie, do you just want to mic off me? <laughs> Right, so hello, we now have our other North competitor, who is Robbie, who's going to talk to us all about being unique and being ourselves. So linking back to the quality, diversity and inclusivity we were talking about earlier. This is something Robbie is really, really passionate about. And you're going to see that two of these cadets, as you've probably seen from some of their talks already, they're really, really passionate and they do lots of things that we don't know at all. And this is amazing. I think it's an amazing learning opportunity for us today to learn about things they're really passionate about and what we can carry forwards. So I know Robbie's been working really, really hard in his speech, so I'm going to hand it over to him to talk all about being unique, being ourselves, and why we should be really, really proud of that. Yes, please. And there we are, ready to go, superstar. Hi everyone, my name is Robert, I'm 10 years old and I am unique. Is anybody else unique here? I mean, we all sleep, we all have two eyes and we all like pancakes. So we are all quite similar, aren't we? But some of us like pancakes with Nutella, some with sugar and lemon and some with jam. Well. I like all three options to be honest. My point is that we all came into this world with a unique combination of talents, abilities, passions, capacities and skills and we should use them as tools to help us reach our full potential. Unfortunately, many times we cannot express these gifts as they are not being identified and because schools teach us the same things at the same age as if we were all identical. Studies say that we only use 2% of our brains and it's no wonder considering that schools just take a curriculum and stuff it into a child instead of taking a child and building a curriculum around them, around their talents and needs. Let's take an example. Einstein. You all know Einstein, don't you? Einstein started to speak at 4 years old. If Einstein was a child today, he would be identified with autism spectrum disorder or intellectual disability. The thing is that his brain was a lot faster than his capacity to express what was happening in his brain. That's it. Did this need a name? And if it did, why did it have to be a bad one? I mean, autism spectrum disorder, intellectual disability, why if we don't fit into a standard category it means we are having a problem? If so, each child should be a category. And guess what? Today, we have Einstein syndrome. So, we have a syndrome for kids who think without speaking, but we don't have a name for people who speak without thinking. <laughs> so, we can't all be very good at everything, but we are all exceptional at something. And if we don't develop those areas that we are good at, then we will always be average. By the way, I started to speak when I was three years old, and now I can't stop talking. <laughs> but even if I wasn't speaking, I learned alphabet at two, and when I was five, I was reading high school level chemistry books, I knew times table, and I was reading Harry Potter. And I was depressed. I was bored in school, and I had no kids, and I had no friends to talk to. I needed kids who I could talk to about black holes, law of attraction, robots, if I could make trees grow faster, or if my body was weighing more or less on Saturn. But I had to learn letters instead. My, um, I became bored and I was crying every day and I was living in a world that wasn't mine, a world of stereotypes and limits. Why limits? Well, the curriculum is too general. It doesn't care if a child has musical intelligence, and that is a limit. It doesn't care if a child is a good negotiator, and that is a limit. It didn't care that I could learn alphabet at two. No, I would have learned alphabet at five, according to the curriculum. And that, my friends, is a limit. So, as I wasn't using my time properly, 
all my talents, all my potential, my parents decided to take me out of school and I was homeschooled for three years. It was a hard decision for my parents as they had this preconception that learning equals school. But I learned how to learn in a different way, in my own rhythm, using my talents and being happy at the same time. While I was homeschooled, I dedicated a lot of time to coding, chemistry, experiments and inventics, but also to playing, camping and travelling. I have inventions that have won international awards at invention conventions from UK, China and America. Me and my brother got £40,000 from Dragon's Den in Romania to open an, a shop with our inventions. I became a UK World Educational Robotics Gold Medalist and I represented UK at the World Educational Robotics Competition in Shanghai, China. I never would have had these results if I had to spend the first most effective hours of the day being bored in school. I also studied Year 10 Chemistry, getting ready to pass GCSE next year. But I'm not ahead in writing on the contrary, I'm anything but artistic and you don't want to hear me singing or see me dancing. Some things I'm just not good at. We can't be good at everything. But the point is that I discovered my talents and I am using them to reach my full potential. Other kids around me are exceptional in drawing and could become great architects. Others have an exceptional dexterity and could become great surgeons. Others are talented in areas we never even thought that they are talents. Being a good businessman is a talent. Being a good listener is a talent. Being a good parent is a talent. Being a good negotiator or public speaker is a talent. But if no one discovers these gifts, they will not serve their purpose. To make these kids exceptional in what they are gifted and to help them fulfill the mission that they were destined for. Some kids may never even be aware of their gifts or may not know what to do with them. That's what school should be all about, discovering and nurturing our potential and creating a unique context for our learning, not creating the context and then forcing the child to fit in, as this again is a limit. How many adults have discovered their talents only after they already had a career and it was too late to change it? How many adults have a job they don't like and dream they had a different one? We spend one third of our lives working. One third. Who wants to spend one third of their lives doing something they don't really like doing? Statistics show that 59% of people consider a career change and 29% of people manage to completely change fields. 59%. Many kids in schools are learning because they have to, not because they like it. Therefore, they'll forget 85% of everything they learn, studies say. They learn for tests to have a well-paid job, but not for their souls. Now, a 59% My speech today is a call to use more than 2% of our brains. A call to reduce the 59% of people who consider a career change. A call to treat and educate each child from an early age in a unique way and to make them exceptional. This way, exceptional will become normal and it will be normal to be exceptional. I was a late speaker, my singing hurts my ears and I better build a rocket than dance. But I'm brilliant in coding, chemistry and robotics. What were you late at and what are you brilliant at instead? No matter the answer, you are unique. So be yourself and be different. Thank you, Robbie. That was very insightful and very encouraging. I definitely know that I now feel a lot more unique and a lot more special and celebrated from your speech. <laughs> so our individual speech task winner showed the judging panel and everyone here today how fantastic it is to be a cadet. Not just in St John, they showed what they can do outside of St John being a young child in the world around us. 
So I'd like to announce that the winner of the Individual Speech Award for the National Youth Public Speaking Competition is Robert. So, if you want to give this one to Georgina, there we are, and do you want to come stand in the middle of us? <laughs> right, looking at me. Great. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Do you want a high five? I want a high five. Come on, buddy. Amazing job.